All right, we're going to get started. Hello, everyone. My name is Patrick Alexander. I am the GIS manager for the Houston Police Department. And with me today is Freddie uh, Croft. He is a lieutenant of police for the Houston Police Department as well. Um, I have been with the police department for going on 14 years now, and I have been in the role that I'm currently in uh, going on six years now, uh, six years now. So um, I'm excited to be here. I know Freddie is as well to, to show you kind of what we've been doing here at the Houston Police Department with GIS. Uh, but before we go into that, I'm gonna hand it over to Freddie so he can introduce himself and, and tell him a little bit about himself. Hey everyone, my name is Freddie Croft. I'm the Lieutenant with the Houston Police Department's Gang Division Task Force. Um, prior to this assignment though, I was the GIS supervisor for HPD. Um, I was in that role for about two years, um, maybe two and a half. Um, I've worked a bunch of different roles within the police department, whether it's a detective, I've worked patrol line um, officer and supervisor, field trainer, and uh, right now I am in charge of our department's largest proactive gang task force. Um, after I joined the GIS unit, I've been using GIS in pretty much every role that I've gone to since then um, and, and trying to spread it across the department. And so I'm looking forward to sharing some of the uh, applications that we've made with you all today, but uh, I'll hand it back over to Patrick. Yeah, so I know we don't have a slide that's going to show this, but basically uh, for this 30 minute session, we are going to, well, I'm going to start off by talking to you about our uh, the unit where kind of how many folks are in it, uh, where the little, the history of the unit, uh, then I'm going to hand it over to Freddie and he's going to actually go through some applications to show you, um, well, a handful of applications to kind of show you the ones that we've developed for the department that are, are used every day. Um, and then we will, uh, he'll hand it back over to me for some final key takeaways uh, with GIS and HPD. And then we'll take, if we have any time left, we'll take any uh, questions uh, and try to answer them as best as we can. So, well, with that being said, I'll go off um, and get started. And by saying that, you know, at, here at Houston Police Department in the GIS unit, we, um, use GIS with a purpose. So whether that's helping leaders and the department make better informed decisions to increasing safety through better information sharing, that is basically our goal. So right now there's uh, it's a three man unit that we are serving approximately 6,000 members of the police department. We take both a top down and bottom up approach to leveraging GIS throughout the department. Um, and we try to gain buy-in as much as possible from end users. So we did that by developing and implementing an RTS enterprise um, system to include a portal, site, survey123, dashboard, web applications, and using desktop, um, desktop GIS, such as RTS Pro. So a little about our history. Um, the traditionally, or the, historically, I should say, in HPD, we were a a desktop only um, department using ArcMap and uh, before that ArcView um, back in the day. And it was mainly just our crime analysts that were using, using it to do some type of like spatial analysis, like hotspots mapping and wow. mapping and things like that. Yeah. So we, um, uh, then they brought me on board and we started moving into servers and web GIS. So um, the first step though, before we can go into WebGIS was to gain buy-in and have an executive sponsor um, through like division commanders, right? And so the GIS unit was then created and tasked with providing support solutions for units and divisions across the department. We brought in a criminal intelligence analyst, his name was Nick Batiste, and he was uh, charged with training and preparing our 100 analysts across the department to use GIS. So he would be our go-to person for troubleshooting and conducting training and um, project requests and things like that. As I mentioned before, then Sergeant Freddie Croft was brought in in 2019. And uh, at the time he was a crime analysis supervisor at our West um, Side Patrol Division. And uh, because of Freddie's unique knowledge uh, with department line, frontline operations, 
he was able to leverage GIS um, and help deploy a full-scale enterprise deployment. And he'll talk about the applications that he, he helped deploy um, when we get to him. Um, since then, Freddie's been, as you can see in our slides, been uh, promoted to a lieutenant to police and has taken on new assignments. And uh, he has become an advocate and uh, an evangelist, if you will, um, for the rest, for GIS uh, with the rest of the department. Finally, in, in May of 2020, um, we have a new sergeant, uh, his name's Lee McIntyre, and he came on board and he took the torch over from Freddie, since he, as you heard, he went off to gang division. And Lee has been able to leverage GIS to assist divisions such as our special operations, um, internal affairs, homicides, and many others. So Freddie, um, before I hand it over to you, somebody mentioned that they can't see our presentation. Oh, so uh, we right now is just this cover slide. Um, Freddie's gonna do a live demo when he talks through his presentation. So um, great uh, question, or uh, I guess, um, to that. So I'm just talking over the slide right now. I'm not real. There's no slides to present, um, Anna and Dominic. So building awareness and buy-in, uh, the GS focused our attention on two prevalent problems facing our department, which is situational awareness by our leaders and access to information by frontline employees. So with that being said, those two kind of like, um, attentions that we wanted to, to help face the problems or pain points, Freddie is, I'm gonna hand it over to Freddie so he can talk to you about the applications that we helped um, mitigate those two issues. Freddie, take over. Thanks, Patrick. So I'm gonna get right into it and show some of the applications that we've made. Um, from an early onset, we had two main tenants that we focus on within the GIS unit. And that was to make other people's jobs easier or um, helping share information across the department more rapidly and, and, and more thoroughly. So um, in doing that, we realized we had three main customers, um, which were our frontline officers, which include patrol officers, patrol supervisors, our TAC units. We had our specialized units in the department, which are, um, I'll be talking about a few of them today, but our, um, like our gang divisions, some of our homicide uh, detectives, things like that, smaller units that are focused on a specific task. And then lastly, our command staff. These are the leaders in our department that are making the decisions on how the department should go. And we realize that there's two types of applications that we typically make. It's either tying into existing data sources and making it more easily to digest and share or creating new data sources um, from information that officers were collecting and making it easier to share. So the first application that we made, and this was an early one that, uh, that we made, this is our recent crime dashboard. Now, what this does is it ties into our report system. So anytime an officer does a report, the, the report type that they generate comes onto this map. So anytime an officer goes out to a crime, they have to generate a report and it's, um, it's sent to our report server and we send it up to federal level. But for us, we do a lot of analysis on this type of work. And as you see right here, this blue area, these are our beats. So every department has beats or precincts, uh, districts, whatever it is. And these are arbitrary boundaries that we use. Usually these are um, based on major thoroughfares, you know, just geographic boundaries. And that's how we separate where our resources are. But as you see, crime doesn't fall within, you know, specific boundaries. It doesn't care. Um, but an officer that's working in a specific area, they might not realize that crimes are happening just across the freeway and um, because they're only in charge of a specific area. So what this does is it allows officers to act, access the information from recent crime uh, that's going on around them, not just in their area, but nearby areas. And it breaks down these artificial boundaries to, uh, to, to allow officers to have more situational awareness on what's going on. This is also used by police supervisors and police managers to get a quick snapshot on the things that are going on to their area. And the nice thing about this is it has the ability to do analysis right in here. So if they're only interested in violent crime that's happened recently, if they're only interested in crimes that are happening on day shift, they can see over the last 24 hours, these are the locations where these crimes have occurred. It, it really puts the power of analysis into the frontline officer's hands and also all of these, this information, because it's tied directly into our report system is what we call 
uh, enhanced. So it allows them to read the reports directly from here and get information on what kind of happened here without having to go into a report system, read the report there, or waiting on their crime analysts at their division to get them information. And so this is really one of the key aspects of GIS within um, public safety is it's tying into these data sources that typically were siloed off and only certain people had access to that information. Uh, in a similar uh, aspect, one of our newer applications is our live call for service data. This right here is a map of all the calls that are across the department that officers are already responding to. And they're broken down into priority because that's how we break down our calls and how we manage uh, emergency management. So beforehand, if you wanted to be able to see the calls that were holding across the department, you had to have a specialized computer. There was usually one or two per station, or you had to be in a patrol vehicle. And all of this information used to be stored as usually just lines of text. There wasn't the ability to see where the calls were physically. So you might see on a call slip that there's a call on uh, Meadow Lake Drive, and you might also see on this thing, there's one on Olympia, but unless you know that area, you aren't familiar with the fact that those are really close. So during major crimes, um, you know, like robberies, or if there's a shooting going on, you, you'll frequently see a lot of calls pop up all around the same area. Having this type of application that ties directly into our CAD system, our computer aided dispatch, allows supervisors, allows officers the ability to see what's going on um, around them from anywhere in the department, from any computer that, they, that is connected to our network, they can see this information and they can get more information on it so that a supervisor at the station, if they're doing administrative work, they can quickly tap in to see, okay, where are my officers? Where are our resources? Do I need to reallocate people? And also not just the assigned calls, but they're able to see the calls that are holding. So if they see that there are a lot of high priority calls holding, they might redirect resources from a different area, ask for help from a neighboring district, and allows our supervisors to have a, I guess, finger on the pulse of what's going on in the city in real time. And this is something that before these applications, it wasn't really possible, at least especially not, um, in an easily viewable way and one that allows for easy access and uh, easy analysis on what's going on. Now, the last application that I'm going to show that ties into our current data sets is our staffing dashboard. This is a newer dashboard. Again, it shows a snapshot on all of the, what's going on with our active resources in the department. And when I say resources, I mean our officers. These are our, um, when, when we talk about resources and assets, we always talk about how many officers do we have that can respond to calls? How many officers do we have that if there's an emergency happen, can get out there and, and help out? So this dashboard ties directly into our roll call system. So our roll call is at the beginning of every shift for a police, you have a, it's called a roll call and they just make sure that um, the people that are supposed to be there are there. So as these roll calls are getting done, these, these levels of staffing go up and down depending on what officers are there. But it also allows our command center or our supervisors that are that are overseeing the operations of the entire department to be able to drill down and if they need additional resources, quickly identify them. So say they needed to find somebody that was in calls for service loop, which is a patrol officer typically, and they needed somebody because that means they're already out on the field and they needed somebody that um, let's just say spoke Spanish. They can quickly dig down and see, here are our Spanish speaking officers across the department, how many each division, and they can get the information on how to reach that person so they can call them quickly and uh, reallocate resources. So this is a newer type of application that we have that, uh, that we've, we've just went live. And this is really impactful during major events like floods or, or um, protests or something like that when we really need to quickly be able to shift resources um, from one area to another. This allows us to do that from a higher perspective. Now, I was talking about um, these are the live data feeds that feed into our current databases. We also tie into um, data sets that are crowdsourced or information that officers submit on a daily basis. So with this type of application, what happens is anytime there's a major event like a shooting or a homicide, um, it gets reported to what we call our command center, and it's the area in our department that monitors the uh, the day to day activity on what's going on. And so if, if there's major events going on, they can report it up to the chiefs and they can make quick decisions. Well, the thing is, is 
Historically, anytime that these what we call significant events get reported, they were just kept on a piece of paper and they were logged in a workbook. But you can't go back in time easily and do analysis on that type of stuff. So what we did is we created a form that our command center can fill in. So anytime an officer calls in these significant events, they log these and it's now stored in a digital database. And now at whenever they are wanting to go back, they can see they can query significant events from a certain time range, or they can say, all right, I only want to see homicides. Again, putting analysis into the hands of people who typically won't have access to certain systems or won't have the training on how to do the specific analysis. And again, just like other applications, they're able to come in here, they're able to read the reports if it was done, they're able to get a synopsis. And our commanders, whenever they come in at the start of each shift, you know, every day, they're able to see what happened over the last 24 hours in their area. And the beauty of these type of systems, when you're saving this information that normally would just get stuck in a file or folder somewhere, is that you're able to do analysis on it later. So after a year, you can come in here and see, all right, let's see all of the shootings that happened in the last year and look for hot spots, look for um, trends, look for patterns so that you can respond better in the future. Or you can, you can take a different approach, whether it's reaching out to community members in that area or, or, or something of that nature. Um, these type of systems have been really impactful in our department as far as the ability to save information that normally would just get logged in a file or folder somewhere. So with that same aspect, we also had, um, like I said, we have three different customers, the patrol officers, the command center, and, and our concerned divisions. So one of the concerned, uh, one of our concerned divisions and units was our gang intel unit. So this was something that I, we had brought to us before I was even over at the gang division. Uh, we had two gang intel officers who were trying to map out gang turfs in a specific area of town. And what they were doing beforehand was they were doing this on pen and paper and writing them on notes. But something that's interesting about gangs in Houston is they're much more fluid than they are on the east or west coast. Um, in those areas, you might have gang members that are part of, let's say, Bloods or Crips, and, and they stay within those those gangs, and that's typically where they operate. And their, their turfs are um, fairly static, at least um, on the short term. In Houston, however, we have um, a much more different system. The gangs operate a lot differently. And what they do is they, they surround themselves in, the, in more of a neighborhood aspect and a social aspect. And they form, so you might have a person that is a member of the blood gang and a member that's part of the crip gang, and they will form what's called cliques. At least that's what the, the term is. And these people are usually um, living near each other. They are usually operating on a certain um, MO. You know, they, they, they are known to commit similar crimes as one another. And so because of that, these gang turfs and these gang notes and who they're affiliated with and who the members are change constantly. So instead of having, you know, this, this overall gang territory that's static and that's, that's you know, authoritative, what happens is we have to be able to keep these notes and change them frequently and make it easy for our gang and tell officers who might not be incredibly tech savvy or, or, or not interested in learning how to do, um, you know, advanced computer uh, analysis or anything like that and make it so it's easily and accessible to them. So what we created is the simple application where they can come in here and they simply click on what they want to add, whether it's a gang territory or a gang activity area, and they can come in here and make those territories very easily. But because we are an enterprise system, as Patrick talked about, we're able to bring in other information too. So we're able to bring in nearby schools that we've mapped out. We're able to bring in apartment complexes. So as they're creating these gang turfs based on the intelligence they have, they're able to see what in the area might impact that or, or, or create these gang turfs. And it allows for a much more situational awareness. But even more impactful is this information is now something that all patrol officers, all of our officers across the department can see. So if you have an officer that's new to an area of town, um, you know, maybe they transfer to a new division or they're, they're working in an investigative division where they're in charge of a new area. They're able to see who the key players are in that part of town, um, what gangs are driving crime and, and get caught up to date much quicker. And this is, again, just taking the notes that officers normally would just have in their own offices and their own cubicles on a piece of paper that was logged in a folder, and it puts it into a system that allows everybody to share this information. And it, it, it allows us to be, um, you know, better 
at, at, at sharing information across the department. Now, with that same mentality um, of, of sharing information and tracking things, uh, when I went over to our gang division, one of the things that I ran into was we didn't have a way that uh, we could keep track of the information and the intelligence that my officers were gathering on a daily basis. You know, like I said, my, my unit right now is about 60 officers and their, their primary task is going out and uh, arresting violent criminals. That is, their, that is their onus every day. But there was no real way to see, okay, where are they doing this? How are they doing this? Um, typically within our department, everybody uses this, what we call a work card system. And it's just, uh, they fill out line items and they say what they did and they put a, a, an, an address of where this thing happened. But it doesn't allow you to really see, you know, if you see a bunch of addresses and a bunch of stats, it's great. It tells you a little bit of information, but it doesn't tell you the whole picture. So what we did using the GIS suite, this is a smart form that, that comes with the Esri software. It's called Survey123, but it's very similar to like Google Sheets um, or Google Forms or Microsoft Forms. It's just a smart form that they come in here and they can pick the information that they need to put in. And as they choose different things, uh, different, you know, if an arrest was made, if they say no, it takes away things. If they say yes, it asks, okay, who made the arrest, adults, all that stuff. These are just bean counting, um, but it allows us to, uh, as a supervisor, see, okay, what is happening? As they put in this information, it saves it on a map that I can see as I come in and see, okay, what have my officers done this week? What have they done this month? Um, and then also, as you see, we enhanced it with these gang terms. So I know, okay, where do we need to focus on with that with respect to gangs? And we can also bring in the old information from the shootings and homicides and see, okay, well, are we focusing our information and our activities in the right area? So this is a new application that we have. But the beauty of all this stuff is because as they're entering it, it saves it into a database. Our officers are now able to come in here and do free searches on all of the things they did. So if they wanted to see, okay, um, what what incidents do we have that a gun was taken, you know, from a suspect, they can come in here and just search gun and see all of the incidents and read about them, um, getting more information, sharing it across the department, breaking on those boundary lines. So with that, I know it was fast, but uh, I hope you, you got a little bit out of this and I'm gonna pass it back over to Patrick to talk about um, our road forward and what we have planned. Patrick. Yeah, thanks Freddie, great job. Um, so I'm just gonna talk about real quick with our key takeaways. Um, mention real quick, some of the applications that we're gonna be working on um, in the future or currently are working on right now is our special event solution. Um, I mentioned this in another panel, but we have a special event unit here in the department that is responsible for over 200 events that uh, happen throughout Houston uh, that the city of Houston puts on. Um, and for example, the World Series is something that they did. Well, they use an application that was developed by Esri and modified by us to leverage the site map and operational map for policing for that event in the security posture and providing a common operating picture during the um, the, the event itself in their uh, CP or their command post. Another application that we're working on is um, Vision Zero. So Vision Zero is a, a um, what is it? It's a, uh, yeah, there you go. Thanks, Freddie. It's an initiative, that's the word I was looking for, that I believe by 2030 or 2050 that we're that we want to have zero fatalities, um, pedestrian, auto, or pedestrian bicycle or bicycle and auto, et cetera, fatalities in the department or in the department. I'm sorry, in the city of Houston, um, it's actually like a national um, initiative. But Mayor Turner committed the city to it as well. So, what this is taking a little bit to render on Freddie's computer, but it's a 3D model of um, the city of Houston and where fatalities are happening and what type of fatalities they've been. It's um, kind of supposed to be a dashboard for our command staff to get a hold of as incidents happen, where are they happening? And we can take that data and an analyze, uh, is it, you know, the street itself that's causing these accidents? What are the uh, indicators behind why some of these fatalities are happening and things like that? Great thing about this is that it, we're leveraging WebGIS to be able to bring 3D um, rendering from the browser uh, 
for our department. So, um, <clears throat> and there's other interesting applications that we're working, feel free to contact us and we can tell you more about it or we'll probably have it on our social media pages or whatever. But real quick, I just wanna talk about our key takeaways and it's really the power of WebGS that really has allowed us to enable the HPD um, with maps and apps that help solve crime, improve efficiency, and provide a safe environment for our citizens. Um, because we were able to market the capabilities of GIS, we raised awareness of the power of GIS, which is what we are here for to talk about, right? GIS and what it can do. Um, from a standpoint of starting a GIS unit up or um, getting other folks in your uh, department or company or you know even in in school to 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 think more about GIS is that once you get your bosses um, uh, once you get your bosses to think about GIS then that is a win get executive buy-in and champions which we've had and we are it was great to do that I'd also say that we were a small team and everything you saw today was built by, um, by, by us. So you can also do that. So one of the things that we are really proud of is the GS unit went from supporting the department from behind to leading from the front. Um, and we were able to make a real difference in the police department and by making an impact in the city by helping to enhance the quality of life in Houston. Another thing that I would wanna impart to you as students is that um, if you are interested in law enforcement uh, to, uh, to think about your, and, and you want to go to school, for example, uh, to college, you don't have to get a law enforcement degree. Uh, I would encourage you if, if you, if you are interested in criminal justice, by all means, get your criminal justice degree. I did that as well. Um, but I would encourage you to get a degree that really something that interests you. Um, most police departments will take any type of degree that you have. So it doesn't necessarily need to be a criminal justice degree. It could be in business or marketing, uh, uh, computer science, um, things like that. So um, that's really important. I, I want you to be able to to remind yourself or to think about that. Um, I, if I could go back and do it, I'd probably do a CJ minor and maybe a ge geography with an emphasis in GIS major and, and things like that. So um, I guess at this time, we're really sure we have one minute left. Um, Fred, if you want to jump on, we can try to answer these questions real quick that I see in the chat. Or if anybody wants to unmute, we would try to answer. It's one minute, so we do apologize. We try to get it all in, but there's our contact information. Um, you can get us on LinkedIn, and the presentation that we kind of saw is on that um, that QR code right there. But let me see, Edgar, did you guys have a live feed of where each law enforcement vehicle is positioned throughout Houston? Yeah, so we do. It's called ADL, and that is through our CAD vendor. And we are actually working with them right now to bring our AVL data onto maps specifically for command post and uh, command center operations and things like that. Uh, Isabel Sell, most of us are training to be non-emergency call takers. So it was cool learning how GS plays and with emergency response and call taking. Yeah, and then with that being said, G um, Isabella, look at um, NextGen 911 and the standards that that has to do with um, call takers and, and the next generation of 911 and how GIS plays into that. Esri is very much involved with next gen 911. It's 11 o'clock. I think we're out of time. Freddie, unless you saw something else. Yeah, I just saw last Edward um, was asking how to how does you know the gang territories get get determined. So um, it's basically through our gang intel analysts. We have gang division officers assigned all across the department, and um, they keep track of their local gangs. And so that's one of the goals is trying to onboard all of our gang officers to really get a comprehensive view. But yeah, it's just crowdsourcing information through the people who who have it. Yeah, so. and. Um... That's, that's it. We're over, over time now. So yep. we really appreciate everyone joining us. And um, again, our contact information is there and feel free to, to hit us up. Um, we are more than happy to, to answer any questions that we can. Please, um, finally, I know folks are falling off, but please rate this. Um, uh, in, what is this? Um, our, uh, our presentation, I think, um, on the GSA website. All right. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, Have everyone. Have a great day. Enjoy the rest of the. Uh...